On December 3rd, 2022, Janice Hunter Gay, who was the second wife of Motown soul singing legend Marvin Gay, passed away at the age of 66. She died without much fanfare from the press, with most outlets that chose to report on it, reporting the story five days or more after it happened. According to Janice's family, she died at her home in Rhode Island, and no cause of death was released to the press. The singer and actress Nona Gay is the daughter of Marvin Gay and Janice. Here is a statement that she made to the media after her mother's passing. Quote, From the time she met my father, she was exposed to the way he saw this world was aching, and she did her best to preserve his legacy as he was taken from us far too early. She took every moment to speak about every word and every note of his music, and she wanted to make sure everyone knew the man she fell in love with. I will never get to see her again in this life, but know she's in heaven with my father and a spokesperson for us in spirit." End quote. And I think that this is really telling and speaks to the fact that Janice never got to live her life as just Janice once she became the underaged girl who was attached to a very grown Marvin Gaye. Even after their divorce, and even after his death, she remains Janice Hunter, the second wife of Marvin Gaye, even in the way that her daughter spoke about her. Well, she did get to do some things on her own terms, as I discussed in this video that was originally called Marvin Gaye tortured his teen wife, so she cheated on him with two R&B stars. I hope that you enjoy it. I hope that Janice Hunter finds peace in the afterlife. When Marvin Gaye met his second wife, Janice Hunter, she was only a teenager, 17 years old and still in high school. Marvin was 34 years old and still married. He was married to his boss's sister, Anna Gordy. She was the older sister of the founder of Motown, Barry Gordy. I think that we can all agree that that's not the most conventional way to start dating someone. But if you think that's something, wait till you hear the rest. Drugs, infidelity, crazy times with big time stars. Nothing about Janice and Marvin Gaye was conventional by the standards of the 1970s or even today in 2021. If you like these videos about your favorite and most scandalous celebrities from yesteryear that make the Ty Said What Ty Said channel a time capsule for the culture, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know every time that I upload one of these videos or every time that I live stream and comment I subscribed in the comment section so that I can say hello to you. Now on to why you're here. Janice Hunter is the woman who would become Marvin Gaye's second wife. But before she became his wife to endure pain at his hands, she suffered a lot of childhood trauma first, thanks to her neglectful parents. Janice Hunter was born on January 5th, 1956 in Los Angeles, California. They say that girls tend to marry some version of their fathers. Well, as it turns out, her own father was a successful black American music artist, Slim Gaylor. He was a jazz singer and songwriter, and he played many instruments. He was sometimes called McVowdy on stage, and he developed his own language for stage shows called Valdorini. He even went as far as writing a dictionary for it. In addition to English, he spoke Spanish, German, Greek, Arabic, and Armenian, with varying degrees of fluency. His career really took off in the late 1930s, and by the 1940s, he was performing with Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie. But he didn't seem to have anything to give his daughter, from what I have read. Janice didn't even get his last name. Janice Hunter got her last name from her white mother, Barbara Hunter. Barbara came from a middle-class background, so it would seem that she had something to offer her child. Well, Janice's black father made Janice's mother a single mother, and though California was a liberal place in 1956, it was just not acceptable for a white woman to have a biracial child out of wedlock. So Barbara sent her daughter off to live in an unlicensed foster home. 
There were a dozen other children in that unlicensed foster home, and there, Janice was frequently subjected to mental, physical, and sexual abuse. Almost as in some sick way to prepare her for her future with Marvin Gaye, for with him, she would endure much of the same. When Janice Hunter was 14, she was finally allowed to leave the repulsive children's home and move in with her mother, who had abandoned her shortly after she was born. Sometime after moving in with her mother, she met Ed Townsend. He was dating her mother, and he was also a music producer and the co-writer of Let's Get It On by Marvin Gaye. He is the man who would introduce her to Marvin Gaye just a few years after she left the orphanage. When Janice was 17, she was finally able to get that introduction to Marvin Gaye. Ed Townsend took her to the music studio during one of Marvin's recording sessions, and Marvin and Janice fell for each other instantly. It didn't matter that he was literally twice her age, she was 17 and he was 34. And apparently, it didn't matter that he was married, and married to Anna Gordy of all people. If that would have mattered to anyone, it should have mattered to Marvin, his being a major artist on the Motown label, and her being the sister of the founder of Motown. So what next? It's time for some divorce, depression, drugs, and adultery. Janice teamed up with David Ritz, the author who wrote Divided Soul, The Life of Marvin Gaye, in order to get this story told. By the way, I referenced this book in my previous video about Marvin Gaye called Marvin Gaye Slept with His Teenage Niece and She Had His Child. If you haven't already seen that video, you can check it out here. But stay with me for now and let's take a further look into the depths of Marvin Gaye's sexual depravity with his teen wife. When Ed Townsend, Marvin's music producer, brought Janice to the studio for the first time to see Marvin record, she felt a multitude of feelings as she laid eyes on the man whom she had adored since she was eight years old. One of the things she explicitly wrote about seeing and hearing Marvin Gaye for the first time was that, quote, his sound erased all pain, end quote. And knowing what we know about her background, I can see why that would draw her to him. Lots of 17-year-old girls have crushes on grown celebrity men, but they rarely meet these men. What I can't understand was why Marvin Gaye, as a grown man, felt so free to publicly express how he felt for her. Knowing that he had the responsibility of a wife and son at home, plus his in-laws were basically holding the strings to his money and his career. So Marvin started a 17-year-old Janice off as his mistress. Marvin took Janice to an Italian restaurant and bribed their waiter with $20 to serve his underage girlfriend alcohol. Just for fun, if you remember who your first celebrity crush was, write it in the comments. I'd love to see those names. Anyway, not long after, the very grown Marvin Gaye was having sex with this teenager in his one-bedroom apartment, which boasted little more than a couch and a junkie named Abe who lived on said couch. According to Marvin, this junkie was his assistant. Clearly, the teenage girl was so overwhelmed by the thought of being with Marvin Gaye that she wasn't aware of signs that would have been obvious to a lot of grown women. A lot of grown women, not all. After all, he was Marvin Gaye. Marvin was having sex with her every chance he got. And one thing that she was able to see was that Marvin Gaye was intentionally trying to get her pregnant. And Janice did write that she was not trying to prevent a pregnancy. Like any 17 year old girl would have thought, Janice saw that they were in love, but it didn't take Janice long to learn that Marvin was in something, but it wasn't feeling like love, more like jealousy and controlling behavior. Marvin tried to convince Janice to drop out of high school so that they could spend their days and nights together. He even offered to be her teacher, telling her, quote, I can teach you everything you need to know. I'll be far more loving and patient than whomever the school provides, end quote though it would be bad enough if having all of the time of a high school girl was his only motive. 
it wasn't. Marvin was jealous of the young boys her age and according to Janice told her, I don't want to share you. There are all those strapping young high school football players looking to love on you. They're my competitors. The longer Janice stayed in this relationship, the more ugly sides she saw in Marvin. She began to see that he thrived on emotional and mental turbulence of the people closest to him. So he would create situations around those people that would give him a front seat to their emotional distress. Janice recalled Marvin picking her up from school and casually mentioning that he needed to make a stop. That stop was to go to his wife's house to pick up his son from her. While he went inside to get his son, Janice stayed in the car, scared. She was young, but she knew that Marvin was this lady's husband. Well, it didn't matter that Janice stayed in the car because Anna Gordy, his wife, came outside to see just who her husband was ditching her for. Anna approached the car and ordered Janice to roll her window down. Janice basically cracked it about an inch, and I don't blame her. According to Janice, Anna said to her, I just want to see what someone like you looks like. From there, she turned her attention to Marvin and told him, Now that I've seen it, don't ever bring it back here again. That was probably one of Janice's less complicated situations with Marvin. Shortly after this incident, he got her pregnant. Marvin kept expressing his joy at the son that they were going to have, never acknowledging that it could be a girl, even when Janice mentioned that possibility. Janice ended up having a miscarriage of her first pregnancy. Marvin helped her by saying that, quote, next time, God will bless us with a healthy boy, end quote. When Janice was 18, Marvin turned her into a full-blown teen mom concubine. He was still married to Anna Gordy when Janice gave birth to their first child in 1974, a daughter named Nona. Janice apologized to Marvin for having a girl, as if it were her fault. The amount of mind control that he seemed to have over Janice was as amazing as it was sickening. From there, this 35-year-old adult went on to criticize his teen girlfriend about the stretch marks that were now on her body from giving birth to his child. Janice recalled that he commented to her saying, surely there's a way to rid yourself of those things. Even with the harsh criticism of her new mom body, Marvin Gaye still found it in him to make Janice a teen mom once again the very next year. This time, they had the son that he was waiting to be blessed with, Frankie. Now, Marvin and his new family could settle into family life, if you could call it that. Frequent visits from Parliament and Funkadelic members George Clinton and Bernie Worrell to play basketball and drop acid with Marvin Gaye. Invitations to Ike Turner's studio, where he was known to carry around his coke supply in a suitcase. And at home, Marvin writing and producing music while Janice watched and they both stayed high on pot and coke. If that was everyday life at the gay residence, you can only imagine what a night out must have been like. In her memoir, Janice recalled her first time being prodded by Marvin Gaye to get it on with a random couple. By this time, she had already had his two children, but they were not yet married, so she would have been 19 or 20 years old. He would have been 36 or 37. She and Marvin and this random couple had all been smoking pot and snorting powder together. Then Marvin noticed that the couple was checking out Janice. She said that Marvin told her, quote, I think that they want to take this party to the next phase. A small intimate orgy is just what the doctor ordered, end quote. Apparently, he was that doctor who ordered this. He didn't physically participate, but he told everyone what to do and watch with pleasure and joy. Marvin was a voyeur who enjoyed watching his teen wife have sex with other people, even if she did not enjoy it. When it was over, he asked Janice, you loved it, didn't you? 
She answered, not especially. He replied, oh dear, please don't deny it. You were an animal in heat. You couldn't get enough. This was your dream come true. She replied, not my dream, Marvin, yours. The very next night, the couple returned looking for more, but Marvin's joy and pleasure didn't return. It turned into jealousy. He told Janice, you go off with them if you want to. I can't stop you. I won't try. Of course, Janice refused the couple because she never wanted to participate in the first place. She did it to please Marvin, who was pleased at first, but after she told the couple to leave, Marvin started up with his mind games again. He told her, to watch purity turn to perversity is a fascinating thing. You were once my angel, and now you have fallen. And yes, I do admit, it is exciting to watch you fall. I can only imagine how she must have felt, as the teen mother of his children who only wanted to please him. Then Marvin started putting Janice in freaky situations with his show business friends and enemies. Janice wrote about a couple of evenings with Richard Pryor that were relatively mild for the couple. She and Marvin partied with Richard Pryor, who invited them one night, quote, to watch bikini-clad dancers having sex with each other. She wrote, The evening was uncomfortable for me, but I went along with the program. During another night with Richard Pryor, he, quote, got so coked up that he hit his wife over the head with a bottle of wine and called everyone at the table a fucking whore, except me. Marvin laughed and said, I should be flattered, end quote. Then there came a time that Marvin tried to get Janice to have sex with Frankie Beverly, the lead singer of Maze. Janice saw that Marvin had developed a habit of steering her toward other men. Sometimes he seemed to do it out of a perverted delight from seeing her with other men. Other times, it seemed to be out of a weird need to create a scene that would stir up his own jealousy. Recognizing a chemistry between Janice and Frankie Beverly, Marvin did everything he could to set up a sexual encounter between the two of them. Finally, he had his chance when one day, Frankie Beverly came for a visit. Marvin not only booked a room for Frankie at a local hotel, but booked the adjoining room for Janice, pretending that he needed her out of the house so he could focus on music. On that awkward day, Frankie Beverly and Janice Gay did see each other at the hotel. They were both well aware of the uneasiness about the whole situation, but that didn't stop them from smoking pot together in Janice's room. Eventually, there was a loud bang at the door. Of course, it was Marvin, hoping to catch his wife having sex with Frankie Beverly. But Frankie crawled back into his room on his hands and knees, and Marvin, to his dismay, found his wife alone. Marvin wasn't able to get the satisfaction of seeing his wife have sex with Frankie Beverly on that day, in the trap that he set up, but Janice made it clear that at another time, and on her own terms, she did have sex with Frankie Beverly. Marvin was still being cruel to her, but she wasn't quite ready to end it with him. Right after she and Marvin got married, he was telling her that he loved her, but he wasn't in love with her. Marvin Gaye, now almost 40, carried on with complaints about his wife's body, her sagging breast, and her stretch marks. He told her, quote, there's a big difference between pleasure and excitement. As a man, I can't help but seek excitement." End quote. She would turn a blind eye to his infidelities. That was just the way it was. He cheated, she kept her mouth shut. She wrote that at the age of 22, she was, quote, convinced that I had lost my youth forever, end quote. He really seemed to get enjoyment out of talking to her in ways that would make any wife feel insecure. He loved doing things to her that would cause her to question his intentions. For instance, when it came to a family vacation, Marvin left Janice and the kids behind on a planned trip for the family to Hawaii. He flew there ahead of them, then called to beg her to show up with the kids. And for the next few years, that's how Marvin would do their vacations plan the trip for all of them to travel together, 
then leave them all behind and beg them to join him later, after he reached the destination by himself. Marvin and Janice Gay had really vicious fights too, including one time when Marvin Gay, while driving with both of their children in the car, began to swerve the steering wheel and threatened to, quote, drive this thing off the road, end quote. Enough of that type of behavior day in and day out had Janice ready to try something new. So, she had an affair with Frankie Beverly. And while she was sleeping with Frankie Beverly, she did something that would really mess with Marvin's head. Janice had an affair with Marvin's biggest music rival, the man who was already starting to replace her husband as a sex symbol of soul music, Teddy Pendergrass. Yes, sleeping with Frankie Beverly and sleeping with Teddy Pendergrass and doing a little bit of everything with Teddy Pendergrass, snorting cocaine and dating him publicly, so publicly and carelessly that one day Marvin Gaye saw Janice and Teddy on a date at a restaurant, so he sat outside of the restaurant and stalked them. Those sexual affairs seemed to take Marvin over the edge. The jealousy that Janice was probably used to had now become violent. One day, while Marvin was high on psychedelic mushrooms and cocaine, he started to talk about Janice's betrayals and he became enraged. Janice wrote that he, quote, took a kitchen knife and put it to my throat. I was petrified, paralyzed. I thought it was all over, end quote. Marvin Gaye told her, I loved you too much. This love is killing me. I beg you to provoke me. Provoke me right now so I can take both of us out of our misery. His rage subsided before he actually stabbed her or himself, but for Jan, this was the final straw. She took the children and left. And to be clear, she doesn't paint herself as the victim when it comes to cheating on Marvin Gaye with Frankie Beverly and Teddy Pendergrass. She believes that she was acting out of anger against her husband. To say that the rest of their interactions over the next five years were rough would be an understatement. Their whole family was caught up in nasty back and forth battles, including one time when, after Jan brought the kids to see Marvin in Hawaii, he refused to let Frankie leave with Janice. She didn't get to see her son for over a year. Meanwhile, Marvin, out of his mind on cocaine, was accusing Janice of sending her father or gang members to try to kill him. By this stage, Marvin had been financially wiped out clean from his first wife, Anna Gordy, and the IRS. At least, that's the way the story is often retold and that's partially true. But Marvin's extravagant spending on waterfront properties, luxury cars, and drugs cannot be overlooked either. Had he exercised just a pinch of frugality and kept up with his taxes, he could have lived a more than comfortable lifestyle without being in debt to his first wife or the IRS. However, caution was not the name of his game. So by the time that Janice was ready to divorce him, he and his son Frankie were living in an abandoned Helms bakery truck. When Janice filed for divorce in 1982, she was working odd jobs and living from couch to couch with their daughter, Nona. Needless to say, Marvin was not able to pay child support and alimony was out of the question. They briefly rekindled their relationship when Janice joined him on his tour of the US in 1983 to support him. It didn't take long for his insecurity and jealousy to jump out and he wrongly accused her of sleeping with his bass player. And that was the last, last straw. Janice went from enduring sexual abuse at the orphanage to living with a mother who pimped her out to a celebrity when she was only a teen, to having that man turn into her husband and pimp her out to whomever for his own sexual pleasure, which would often turn into jealousy. And she went from all of that to having to end the relationship out of the fear of possibly losing her life and the lives of her children. Marvin Gaye introduced her to a lot of celebrities and what seemed like an enviable lifestyle. But he also introduced her to drug use and he abused her on many levels. Still, in Janice's mind, 
the good with Marvin outweighed the bad somehow. Again, she painted herself as nobody's victim and took the blame for her part in the insanity in her life during her time with Marvin Gaye. And after some time, she got past the point of condemning herself for losing herself in Marvin Gaye. And another good thing is that she got clean and sober and left the drugs alone. And it might surprise you to know the celebrity who helped her on her path to sobriety, Rick James. My sources for this story are the New York Post, the Washington Post, After the Dance, My Life with Marvin Gaye, and the Minnesota Spokesman Recorder. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Ty Said What Ty Said channel. Please leave a thumbs up and comment so that we can get a discussion going. And share this video on all of your social media, especially your Facebook. That really helps me out a lot. And subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know when my next video is ready for you. And if you don't like what I'm saying, but you love it, feel free to hit that applaud button just below your video screen there and send me some donations, donations, donations. Yeah, baby. See you on the next video. Are you a content creator, influencer, or blogger who feels like your platform could use an extra boost? Are you thinking about becoming a content creator but you don't know where to start and you want to be sure that you dot all of your I's and cross all of your T's? If so, Layla Lynn can likely show you exactly what you need to get on your way. Her fun new class is called The Business of Blogging with Layla Lynn and in it, she is sharing the fundamental principles of blogging in 2022. Because let's face it, social media is a moving target and what worked well five years ago is likely not what works well today. And with Layla Lynn, you're getting the information from someone who is successful at putting the principles to practice on her own social media platforms and she literally has the credentials to back it all up as she holds degrees in social media marketing. Layla Lynn is a multiple six-figure earner whose first social media marketing course helped this channel go from earning $30 a month to earning five figures a month. I'm ready to dig in my heels and learn even more so that I can earn even more. Are you with me? If so, hit my link at the top of the description box and join her class to access this amazing, affordable advice from a woman who knows her business. The business of blogging.